day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Here's an example of humility. This is in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, that means the anointed one. That's what we call Christians. means Christ-like. We're anointed like him because we're the part of the body. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves. That's why you, that's what the scripture says. So when people sit there and they play the little that see the world is different as opposite as that it, it wants to put down and build themselves up but put down other people that that's the world that's the world that comes in and that's how even kids come into classroom when they start off young and all the way over to high school and even to college even through life People try to esteem themselves and put down other people. That that's that's just that's how life is. That's why we need a redeemer. Because not you know, always have people gonna judge you and put you down, right? Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, or Christ Joshua or Christ Joshua, huh? who being in the form of God, think of this now, look at this, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Come on now, because we're talking about the Redeemer. But made himself, look at that, he didn't even make himself in no reputation and looked upon him and took upon him the form of a servant. That's humility. And was made in the likeness of men because he had to be the redeemer of men through his blood. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. And that's why we know that there's more than just the name, but the meaning of the name. Because this name is above all, every other name. That's why it's important to know the meaning of the name. Because how, when somebody said they called themselves Joshua back in those days, when somebody called themselves Joshua or Jeshua or, or Jesus, we need to understand that Jesus we're talking about who Joshua we're talking about is above all other names. Whoa, hallelujah. Because all other names are not anointed. All other names didn't have the, the blood that, that redeems us. It's only Jesus, only Joshua. Huh? It's the meaning of the name. It's the uniqueness of the meaning of the name that's important. Come on now. That the name of Joshua the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. They're going to bow to the common name or they're going to bow to the meaning of the name. Huh? That every name of Savior, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and in things on earth and under the earth because we're talking about God Almighty. Huh? And that every tongue shall confess that Joshua, that Jesus, that Savior, Christ, is Lord, huh? To the glory of God the Father, huh? That every tongue shall confess that the Son, Christ, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Son, we're talking about not any son, 
because there's many sons, but there's only one son. That's Jesus. That's Joshua. Huh? You need to understand the meaning behind the name. Because every name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to Joshua that Jesus that is translated to from Joshua or the son. The son. Every, every tongue shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Huh? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. What? That's what we need to understand. Because that's maybe the world has done that and we, we suddenly don't understand it. We suddenly don't get it. That is the power behind the name. There's power behind the name. <laughs> There's power behind the name. Once again, my people, look at that, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge and also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the Lord, the law of thy God. I also forget thy children. You forgot the law. You forgot the meaning. Let's go back to the meaning of the name. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. What name? Savior. Come on, y'all. Joshua. Come on, y'all. Jesus. In the Old Testament, they, they only want to talk about Joshua. Come on now. Come on, saints. How do we end up calling him Jesus? The name Jesus comes from the Greek way of expressing his name, which is pronounced Yashu. While we have an English version of the Hebrew name for Gabriel, we seem to have ended up with an English version of the Greek version of the Hebrew name for our Messiah. That doesn't even sound close anymore. It makes him all the less recognizable to his Jewish brethren. Jesus just sounds so Gentile, doesn't it? But when Jewish people hear his name in Hebrew, quite often the light goes on. Ah, Joshua. The name Joshua was known and used in Jewish history. We can find men called Joshua and the roll calls of the team serving in the temple. And we're going to go over those scriptures uh, next. It is a version of Joshua, and it means salvation. That makes much more sense to Jewish hearers. And it needs to start making sense to us. We need to know the meaning behind the name. First Chronicle 24-11, the ninth of Joshua, or Jeshua, excuse me, the, the, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth of the Shekinah. Now, I, I was, it was interesting. Why, why wasn't it, why we don't even use that as an English translation? Because in the Old Testament that, of Hebrew, the translation is Jeshua. Huh? There it is right there, Jeshua. Why wasn't that used? We got Joshua. Why would we use Jeshua? That's the name. Because it's the meaning of the name that matters, right? Why why do we go? I'm just wondering did somebody try to ward it down anyway? Or the fact they don't teach you and emphasize the fact is that that's your redeemer. Hmm? So that when you speak it, you speak life, you speak power. You need to understand the power behind it. Here's what Second Chronicle, uh, Second Chronicle, uh, thirty-one fifteen. Then and next to him was Eden and Ben Adami and Jeshua and Shemaiah. Look at those names. I'm just saying. Is the fact is that there's Jeshua again. It's in the Chronicle. And the cities of the priests and their set office to give their brothers by courses as well 
to the great as to the small. Jeshua. That's the English translation for the Hebrew Bible. So it's Joshua or Jeshua. And why we didn't take that translation? There's an English version. Why? I don't know. But all I know is that we translate it that way, regardless of what man may have tried to make it, it's the meaning of the name. Jesus is the meaning of the name that, that matters. Huh? Here's another one. And which came with Zerubbabel? Jeshua. There's again. Salvation. Savior. Redeemer. You know? These were priests. There was uh, his his name is is in in the priesthood. Ezra two six. The children of Pahamoa, of the children of Jeshua, and Joab, two thousand eight hundred and twelve. Ezra two thirty six. The priests, the children of Jezediah, of the house of Jeshua, uh, nine hundred seventy and three. Then his name was common working in the temple. It means salvation. It means the redeemer. That's what I want to make sure. I'll, I'll probably change the title on 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 you on uh, YouTube. Is the fact is that's what it means. You know, come on, y'all. <laughs> How Jesus is known and what he what he is called in Israel. Sadly, for many long years among Hebrew-speaking Jewish people, Yeshua has been known as Yeshua, which is an acronym for a curse. Isn't that something? Yimaka, Shimo, V, Z, Hora, which means may his name and memory be obliterated. Wow. So much suffering, persecution has been inflicted upon Jewish people in the name of Yeshua. That his very name has become a stumbling block in offense. And now he is often considered one of the enemies of the Jewish people. This word Yeshua is made of three Hebrew letters. Missing the last letter of his name. The ha sound. This last letter is called Avin, Advin, which rather interestingly means I. It's almost as if without the Avin, they cannot see. But when the Avin is added, sight comes to the blind. In other words, the Jewish people, because I mean, Hitler sit there and try to kill them. So Jeshua is commonly called Jeshu here in Israel. I just want you, this is a guy that wrote up and said that. But there are some academics who call him Jeshua. And funnily enough, one particular extremist group who sprayed anti-Masetic graffiti on a church declared that Jeshua was a monkey. That's probably another code name for being African. Actually spelled his name in, spelled his name correctly. But often he referred as Jeshu Ha Nozi, which means curse of Jesus, the Christian. Wow. Wow. In Israel, he's usually seen as a Gentile, Christian, and others. But Jesus wasn't a Christian. He wasn't a Christ follower. He was Christ himself. Hey, glory to God. But he was Christ himself. You know? Uh, <laughs> the Jew of Messiah, Jesus wasn't a Christian. Mary wasn't a Catholic. And John wasn't a Baptist. Oh, did you, did you know that? They were all Jewish. Did you know that? Or Hebrew is probably better. Wow. Nazari is the Hebrew word for Christian. It actually means one from Nazareth. Huh? It would be more accurate to say Joshua means Nazareth. Joshua from Nazareth. It's close, but words, but words away in Israel perception. 
Christ is the Greek word for Messiah. So Jesus Christ really means Joshua the Messiah. That I won't close up with this, but I'm saying is that's why I think it's so important. Get this message is understanding the meaning of the name. That's that's what we want to do is focus on the meaning of the name. If we can get the meaning of the name, there's then we have returned the power back. Or don't allow somebody else to to change the meaning because. You know, it's interesting. The Hebrews, who we just read, they they changed the name to equal a curse. They took jo Joshua, took the A off, the Avin, Avin, off to call it a curse because of the you had the Crusades and everything else going after Jewish people. So when they hear Jesus, or when they hear Yeshua, they 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 cringe because of what it has been represented by man in uh, toward the Jewish people. And you know the thing about it, that same thing for uh, what it was trying to do. I guess they were trying to do the same thing for for uh, the slaves, those Africans that came from from Africa. They wanted to us and 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 that's how some people effectively try to do they wanted us to look at that name as a curse and they they pushed it and pushed it the bad thing name a slave ship after to some degree they wanted us to look at our redeemer as a curse but we know and we'll close out with that is Names have a meaning. Words have meaning. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Man, I hope God get this word out to people. I hope, I hope other people will be able to preach it and, and teach it. We, we, we got to understand words matter. Words matter. Know that when you say Jesus, when you say Joshua, make sure you know what it means, that it has a purpose. It has a, a place, you know, it's not a common name. It's not, it's not just a name. There's a power behind the name. And if we get to understand the power behind the name, then we have what we need to do to fight the enemy. I've been redeemed. I wasn't redeemed by a black person. I wasn't redeemed by a white person. I was redeemed by Jewish people or Hebrew people. I was redeemed by them. I was redeemed by him. Hey, and I need my redeemer. I need my savior. You need your redeemer. You need your savior. You need to be approved by him, not approved by people. Stop trying to get approved by people who did not die on that cross for you, who did not rise again for you, because they couldn't. Only he could. That's the significance of the gospel, of the person who rose again who laid down his life for us and go, got up again, who blood has washed our sins away, who body was broken so that we could be whole and made whole. That's, that's what, it's the meaning behind the gospel that matters. Oh man, I keep putting it out there, but it's the meaning. Teach your children the meaning. See, we teach children about racism. We teach children about hate. We teach children about superiority. We teach children the wrong things because none of those things will get you into heaven. Many of those things we teach and hate and all that other stuff, the devil loves it because it's sending you to hell. And it's sending you. You're sending yourself by what's going on, your mouth and the deeds. Receive the Savior. Yeshua. Take the translation that we decided to come up with because, you know, it really is, it, it, we kept, to me, it's like it was intent to, to bastardize. But God is saying is, if you understand, we're talking about this Savior. If we understand the power behind the meaning, 
of the name. Regardless of what people made it to be, a name above all names, huh? See, I want to I want to deal with the name above all names. Therefore, when somebody else sit there and try to come by their name, when somebody sit there and try to come by their color, somebody try to come by their race or whatever you want to call it, there is no God beside God. There's no Savior beside God. God is Savior. God is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He paid the price for all of us. Please, learn the meaning. Because the meaning that matters. Get the meaning down. So you want us to keep saying Jesus? Keep saying Jesus. But Jesus means what? It means you got to say it means redeemer. It means savior. You need to know what it means. The enemy wants to keep us from knowing what it means. It means salvation redemption that's what i need that's what you need and he 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 and some people sit there trying to change the god's love of the world john 3 16. there was an in the world that you can sit there and say i don't care what you think because you know what? it doesn't matter what you think it doesn't matter what you want to think <laughs> it's matter what it is jesus said i'm the way the truth and the life no one no one no one they in the world now and said, no one comes to the Father but by me. I got to come by him. I can't come by you. I got to come by him. Amen. And I'm going by him. Hey, glory to God. And everybody else that received the name above all names, they are going to heaven. They are going through abundant life here on earth because they have been redeemed. They have been approved. People don't approve you. People don't receive you, but he received you. That's why we ain't got to worry about it. That's where we can stop people dying and, and going and, and killing themselves because they're looking for somebody else to approve them. What I'm telling you is God has approved you through his son, his savior, his redeemer. You are redeemed in Christ. You're not going to find it in people. You're not going to find it in dead spirits. You're going to find it in reincarnation. You're going to find it in the Son, in the Savior. You can call him Yeshua. You can call him, if that's what our English and that's what they came out, and that's some kind of way to translate. You call him Jesus. But just understand the meaning of the name. If you do that, you now can call on him. When everybody else rejects you, when everybody else wants to disrespect you, you sit there and say, he respects me. That's all that matters. Because anybody else, their respect doesn't matter. Their love doesn't matter. The approval is from God Almighty. So I hope you got that word today. I hope I, and we'll try to keep nailing and running it down over and over again. Get it in your spirit. The name, Joshua, the name, Jesus, the name means salvation, Savior, Redeemer. That's what you need to make sure you understand in your mind and in your heart. That I want our bishops to say, you, this word got to mean something to you. It got to be real to you. Jesus got to be real to you. Joshua got to be real to you. Savior must be real to you. That's when people can sit there and try to put you in bondage. You say, no, oh, I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. When people sit there and say, you're less. Somebody will call you a monkey. Hey, I don't know about what you think I am. Because I, he called me a monkey. He called me a son. Hallelujah. Through my Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus. Come on, saints. It's the ability to be able to walk this walk and talk this talk. Know who you are in him, not in people. People will put you down. they kick you out. They even kick, they wanted to kick Jesus out. Why? Because we didn't go by the world's way and thinking about the world's way. We don't need to think about the world's way. We need to think about him. Amen. 
All right, let's pray. And I hope you have a great week, great Sunday. I'll put these out and try to, what I like to be doing lately is put them out on a blog and, and uh, being able to the blog is to put, you know, break these down in segments so you can look at them throughout the week in segments. Amen. Well, you know, that, that's something that between you and God, whether you do it or not. My job is to preach the gospel. Huh? And 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 remind you what the words mean, because the words matter. Death and life were in the power of the tongue. So what's coming out of your mouth? Check your fruit too. Amen. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to worship, praise your holy name. You said when two or three are gathered in your name, that you've been in the midst of them. And your name, hallelujah, is Savior, Redeemer. Hallelujah. Hebrew, Yeshua, uh, Greek, Israel. In, 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 in the English, Jesus, started in the 1500s. So I think, I don't know about all the people in the world trying to water down the, the meaning of salvation, redeemer, redemption. We just want to sit there and say that, is, that the word is coming out. The truth is coming out. That we're learning now who or what the name means. It means savior. And God Almighty is the Savior, the Redeemer, hallelujah. Sent His Son so that we can be redeemed and so we can be approved. Thank you for approving me, Lord. Thank you. I pray, Lord, that this message reach those who you want to reach. And so today can declare Joshua, <laughs> Jesus, Joshua, Jeshua, <laughs> Meaning all means Savior. That they can all remember that they asked in the name of the Savior. Amen. God bless you, Lord. I thank you for this blessing. I thank you for this mercy and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless everybody. Thank you for listening, those who do listen. And I'm going to tell you something. He just told me, drive the bus. Just drive the bus. You stop at a stop. You stop at the bus stop, you either get on the bus or get off the bus. You just go ahead and just preach the gospel. And all you get a chance, uh, subscribe to the channel too. Amen. Help me out. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know you're listening. Amen. All right. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. Have a great week. Amen.